Victory for Abertillery at the top of the Western Valleys of Gwent. Further downstream is Newbridge, where at the welfare ground, the revitalised side were hosts to the South Wales Police, this club that knocked them out of this year's cup. But Newbridge's record since Christmas is an impressive one, only three defeats in 22 matches. Well, let's have a look at the tries, 14 of them in all, from yesterday's match. So it's the uh, police scrummage which goes backwards yet again. The tap back by Neville Roberts. Newbridge take a quick line out. Steve Feely looking back inside. Steve Graham, number eight and captain this afternoon. And Graham is over for the first try of the afternoon for Newbridge. The line out taken quickly by Steve Feely. Caught the police napping. <laughs> they say the local barber is a bit of a mean chap. And so is Steve Feely. And for the tap penalty for Newbridge, deep inside the police 22. Feely, Terry Shaw, number four, crashing for the police line. Now sets up the ball for his forwards. Feely is there. Is he going to bury his way through? Feely is over. The second try of the afternoon for Newbridge. So the scrum is just inside Newbridge's half of the field. And again, that police pack goes backwards. What can they do from here? Simon Davis. A little grubber crit by the uh, fly half, and now it's Bledin Bowen, the captain who hacks on. Back there is Wayne Bow for Newbridge. Oh, he looked as if he might have gone into touch, but play carries on. That's a big hoof downfield. Barber is back for the police, running out of his own 22 now. Bledin Bowen, that's a nasty pass for the captain. Inside his 22. Oh, Feely is intercepted. Feely's going to score his second try for Newbridge. Well, it was a little untidy by the police, and Feely capitalised on that. Well, perhaps the police need a few reinforcements at the welfare ground this afternoon. Newbridge scrum, just on the police goal line. The little dummy run by Feely. Now Graham with a pick-up. Graham, number eight, scores for Newbridge. Second try of the afternoon, and Newbridge turning in the display here. Now the police decide to run it. Simon Davis, a couple of dummy scissors, Mark Hembury, Simon Allen coming back inside. That's a good run by the right winger for the police. And the police have scored. A reply by them, it's Jones of Newport. Well, the Newbridge pack has been a revelation at the welfare ground this afternoon. Lots of power there, good front row and plenty of weight behind them. Just inside the police half of the field, Feely. That service to Turner, kicks with both feet. He really is a neat player, this outside half, who's come back to the club and given it a lot of confidence. But it's straight back to Hembury now for the police. On his favoured left foot, has he made touch? No, he hasn't. And look who's back there, that's Turner. He's got lots of time now, he's taken the line out to himself. Newbridge again, a little adventurous, running out of their 22. This is full-back Wayne Bow half tackled, now looks back inside, Hussey the centre, and Newbridge prepared to come away with it. Well, they rattled up 50-odd points in the week, and now look at this, Newbridge are going to score again, Chris Phillips, their left winger, a try which seemingly came out of nothing, started by Turner with a line-out throw to himself. Kipper Phillips, as he's called, scores for Newbridge. Newbridge attacking yet again with this formidable pack of theirs. Coach Clive Davis will be very happy with their performance this afternoon. Again, that dummy run from Feely, catching the police number eight. Oh, look, Feely absolutely unmarked. Scores his third try of the afternoon. The club's top scorer this season, his 24th of the season. Hembury running out for the police. Well, that's all they can do now. There's so many points behind. What can the police do from here? That's the halfway line. Feely. Newbridge coming away with it. Back inside to Turner. Neil Hitchman. Craig Meredith for Newbridge. Almost going up to the police line. Oh, that's untidy by the police. But it looked like obstruction on the police player there. But Hussey, it is Hussey who's been awarded the try by the referee. 
37 minutes gone in the second half and it's Newbridge who've scored eight tries and they're leading by 44 points to 21. Graham comes away with it. Feely, the little dummy, linking up nicely with Wayne Bow. Simon Williams, the right winger. And it's putting the police under pressure again. Was it a mark by Hembury? No, the referee's allowing play to go on and Newbridge score. All sixes and sevens, the police, and it's Wayne Bow, the Newbridge fullback, who adds to the agony for the police. 50 points the police are trailing by and it's Steve Graham who comes away again for Newbridge Newbridge looking to score Terry Shaw is it the referee allowing the try Shaw scores his second try of the afternoon Newbridge's tenth try here <laughs> 54 points to 21 on the police line Two minutes of injury time played by the referee. Feely now, Turner. I see the loop by Turner. Turner going for the line himself, perhaps. Wayne Bow, dummies, and Bow is over for his second try in about eight minutes. Well, the fullback is enjoying himself this afternoon. The conversion of his own try. And 60 points Newbridge have scored here this afternoon. 11 tries they've scored, and the referee calls an end to it all. The end to the police agony. An emphatic win from Newbridge by 60 points to 21. Well, the two Newbridge coaches, Clive Davis and Paul Evans. Clive, let's come to you first. What a fantastic performance, especially by the forwards in the, the last home game of the season. Uh, yes, the forwards seem to be putting it together at the moment. Uh, since, well, the last two or three months, uh, it's all down to hard work. Uh, you, can't, you don't get anything for nothing. And fair play in uh, all the training sessions, 99% of them turn up and uh, work extremely hard. Uh, they, and it's, we're reaping the benefits now. Um, front row, second row, they all work for each other. They all run for each other. And um, they'll take some beating at the moment. And Paul, with all the hard work of the forwards, the backs put on a display, didn't they? Yes, very good, Alan. They, uh, they've obviously improved over recent weeks with the uh, improvement in the ball that's been supplied by the forwards. Uh, and, of course, we have tremendous pace and we have a uh, good general at outside half with Paul Turner. But I think it's, uh, it augurs well for the future and for next season for us. And uh, it's a tremendous effort by the boys uh, of recent months. Revenge on the uh, defeat by the police in the Cup? Yes, sweet. Uh, <laughs> something we needed. Uh, we've. It could have been uh, for the last couple of months quite a few doubles we could have had over on us. With the beginning of the season, uh, sides have beaten us, and we could have had the uh, double put on us, but not once that has happened this year. And we've we've uh, repaid it with uh, uh, with kind, as you could say. <laughs> yeah. Paul, finally, quick word. Are you going to keep uh, the whole thing together for next season? Oh, yes. We, uh, we won't have such a dispute that claim, as we can have a, a check on some of those results again in the uh, Welsh uh, Rugby Union today. Aberabin with that 32 points win over Torquay. Newbridge wore blue, Cardiff wore red. No, it's not a poem, but a farce more like it. Jonathan Westwood's early slip, the start of more to come. A game that was literally strewn with errors. Sure, there were the bankers, like Bob Laking tidying up for Cardiff, or Evans, Hall and Ring, Cardiff's international midfield trio, who promised a lot but never quite produced. Mistakes were made and it was tit for tat early on. David Evans tried hard to conjure something. There was always the dependable Mike Rayer at fullback, or Mark Ring attempting something out of his bag of tricks, but Cardiff never took control. Newbridge hooker Ken Waters, recently called into the Welsh squad, joined in the party himself, but he had more to celebrate following a fine performance in both the set-piece and the loose. David Evans dropped a goal to put Cardiff in front, but the Welsh outside half would have been relieved that Ron Waldron wasn't there to see his game. The match had its moments. They coincided with the arrival of Mike Rayer into the Cardiff line. 
This break looked full of promise, but maybe Mark Ring took the wrong option this time with support from Evans and Hall inside him. The Newbridge scrum half, Richard Williams, saved it in front of his own posts. And when David Rees acted as scrum half, he must have wondered what he had done when he passed to Jonathan Westwood. What the Newbridge left winger did from here for the next 10 seconds must have felt like an eternity to his side. Like Houdini, though, he got away with it. Perhaps only the Heineken could do that. Newbridge number eight, the Kiwi, Hemi Taylor, was a tower of strength throughout the match, his dominance giving the Gwent side the confidence to run at Cardiff, and run they did. In the second half, though, Taylor was eventually warded with a try from a scrum five. The pick-up and charge through David Evans's brave tackle took him over, and Paul Williams converted to put Newbridge ahead by nine points to six. But Cardiff responded with a willingness to spin the ball. Hall did well to make the pass for Steve Ford to burst through the middle. Left wing Kerry Thomas gave support, and the ball eventually came back on the Cardiff side. But referee Clive Norling awarded a penalty against Newbridge for going offside. Evans kicked it to level at 9 all. There's no lack of imagination in the Cardiff ranks. There never will be when Mark Ring is around. And when Cardiff won ball, Ring wanted to use it one way or another. Cardiff won the ball again. Back it came on the narrow side. Evans got his pass away and took a dreadful late tackle, but Kerry Thomas was well tackled by David Rees. More promise from Cardiff, but no points. The response came from Newbridge, even if the line-out didn't go according to plan from Waters' throw. The forwards did enough to recover and set it up. The half-backs combined with Paul Williams supplying the pass to Waters that took the Newbridge hooker almost to Cardiff's line. What a strange game it was, with mistakes turned into defeats that earned applause from a frustrated home crowd. Cue Mike Rayer again. And Mark Ring to add the finishing touch. Not quite, however, because that came from Newbridge, with the help of Clive Norling. The Cardiff scrum went down, and a penalty try was awarded. It sealed the win for the Gwent club, which made it a league double over Cardiff. The final score, Cardiff 9, Newbridge 18. ...should prefer to play things faster and wider. It's not a bad policy to deny them space and momentum, and stick to tighter, more controlled disciplines. Pontypool's effectiveness may have diminished, but Newbridge now flies the Premier Division Gwent flag of the driving, rolling pressure game. And you don't get a better example than this, as the home team dominated the early proceedings. And could there be a message there, perhaps, of what might face him next Saturday for the Swansea and Wales scrum half, Robert Jones? Indeed, there was little he could do as his forwards were outmaneuvered by the Newbridge pack that probed every area of weakness. The opening try to David Roberts was the inevitable result. Indeed, the pressurised one-handed flick may prove to be good practice for Jones. Certainly, it was the only means by which Swansea could create a little space. So, despite the obvious imbalance, just one point separated the teams at the interval. A two-minute breather, though, did nothing to break Newbridge's concentration. The second drive and the little disconcerting twists, enough to destroy the Swansea scrum. Scrum half Richard Williams won't score an easier try. Not that the game was one long slog. 
Newbridge, when they choose to use them, have pacey and skillful backs. Flankers who don't just support, but also can take and time a pass. And wingers like Alan Harris, who can clinically round off things. But when domination is absolute, the temptation sometimes is too great to drive on and on. And who can argue, especially when they can release at will. And when it's so well supported by clever kicks. And a kind bounce. And a Peter Crane try. Indeed, the tactical awareness and kicking of outside half Paul Williams is crucial to the Newbridge cause. And offered this sort of platform, dropping goals becomes second nature. Indeed, so much time and space was there that he could have said his thank yous even before receiving the ball. Outgunned in the tight, it left Swansea living off Scrappen, with a quickly taken short penalty as the main source. This movement does emphasise what could have been done had the forwards gained some sort of parity. The open spaces would then have been to Newbridge. All the skills are there, but without the ball, they're redundant. As it was then, the backs were left pondering over what might have been. Newbridge, 22, Swansea, 6. And it's nice to see David Bryant, isn't it, back in the sec in the back row. Moving on then to Newbridge, they're trying to keep their squad happy, and they give Chris Manley and Feely games in the back division, while a French skipper Neil James and Terry Shaw back in action again after a year out with injury. Ken Braxton, the referee this afternoon then from Cardiff, aided by Mr. Alan Barham from Penarth, and on the far side, Mr. Maurice Lawrence from Dinas Paris. So it's Bridgend then in their changed yellow strip will get this game underway there through Alec Williams, a long deep kick taken by Hammy Taylor and forced into touch. Bridgend looking for the double, in fact, having won the game up at Newbridge earlier in the season by 18 points to 12. Spender at the front, but that's off centre. Owen Williams, though, leads the charge now then for Bridgend. Driving in then towards Feeney. Good ruck ball here. Beautifully taken by Alec Williams. The kick down the line for Diplock. Good play by Bridgend. And good play by Alad Williams. I, I do think that it was a particularly good ball that emerged for him from the right. The forwards had done well, but the way he plucked the ball out of the air then, and in one movement for that little grubber kick to put Bridgend now in a very advantageous position. Steve Feely then having treatment for a cut to the head, waiting to put the ball into this scrum. Trying to catch Bridgend offside as Hemi Taylor now then takes it on. The Bridgend back row having got up. Taylor goes for the try, trying to get past Owen oh, Williams at his final. Lays the ball back. Here's the chance then for the Newbridge backs. Chris Manley going for the gap, getting good support from Matthew Kehoe. The hack on again by Williams as Howie goes back to cover. Williams going through. Alec Williams has to cover now this time. For the ball bounces kindly there for Paul Williams. Quick trill the whistle then from referee Ken Braxton. But a good break out there by Newbridge, the first time they've been in Bridgend territory. And some good play by Hemi Taylor initially. He found himself in a lot of trouble, but was able to control himself, get the ball back, and that was the kind of control we expect from forward. Bridgend with a good run at the moment, unbeaten in six matches, including two draws. Forced for the moment, though, to defend as the scrum goes down on the far side. Jonathan Rowlands on the loose head side there for Newbridge and David Rees on the tight head side for Bridgend. As Robert Howley in the 48 players, of course, nominated from the party will be chosen for the Australian tour. Newbridge trying to put some pressure. Howley's kick though is live. David Rees, under pressure from Webb though, gets away from him. Looking for back for a sport, gets it from Neil James. Big six-footer, can play, of course, almost equally as well in the second row, showing his strength there. 
But it will be interesting to see what happens in this scrum. In the two scrums that we've had already in the game, Newbridge have showed some control and some strength, making Bridgen look as if they're under a bit of uh, pressure there. Scrum going down then on the Bridgen 22 metre line. Once again, referee Braxton has a quick look over to that side to his touch judge, Morris Lawrence, to check what's happening in the front row. The decision is a penalty there against David Rees of Bridgen, the tight head prop. So the first chance of the game here then, four points for Newbridge from the boots of Paul Williams. So Paul Williams then looking to take his points tally in the Heineken League over the 50-point mark for Newbridge. But he's drank it though wide upon the posts. In these early moments, certainly the Newbridge fours are making it very uncomfortable for Bridgend in the scrum. Scrum going down on the far side this time. Again, Reese and Rollins, the props on that side of the, of the scrum. Ready, 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 ready. Ben Braxton waiting on that side and generalizing then David Reese on the Bridgen tight head side for taking it down. So a second penalty opportunity then as Wayne Hall, the Bridgen skipper, seeks clarification. A second penalty op opportunity of this first half for Paul Williams. Paul Williams then 48 points he scored so far in the Heineken League program looking to take his tally over the half century mark that's better judge kick unlucky Diplock tries to clear for Bridgend who is still in trouble and John Rowland's one goes in to try and rip it away there for Newbridge Bridgend for the moment moving forward and surely they yes indeed says referee Braxton they will get the put in at this scrum Ian Stevens, the Bridgen coach, an old sparring partner there. Charlie Faulkner, of course, here today to look at the forwards. Wait. Referee Braxton giving the two props a little talking to there, telling them to stay on their feet. It's again, Newbridge then go for the drive, but Henry Taylor comes off on that occasion. Kept alive by David Reister. That's a good kick. That's a tester for Chris Bradshaw. Keeps his eye on the ball well, though. Still under pressure, though, but denies that Newbridge. High tackle on the fullback. As things start to warm up a bit there. And referee Brexton wanting to sort it out very quickly, bringing skipper Neil James. Hemi Taylor's coming over as well. David Bryant on the Bridgen side. Neil James, the skipper, number six there of Newbridge. Here's the instant, instance here of Bradshaw underneath the ball. He does so well to, to get the ball, but there it is. It's Hemi Taylor's high tackle that gives the penalty. Back once again then to Feely. As Bridgen go charging in on the new bridge scrum half. David Bryant goes in there. Spender also. But it's taken away there. Well by Terry Shaw for Newbridge as he lays the ball back. John Rowland's in there also. That's a bad one from Feely, but Paul Williams takes the ball well, but can't though. Get it into touch. It's Richard Diplock. Williams once again underneath it. Takes the ball cleanly, calls for the mark. That's not given though. As Bridgen then look for this loose ball. But the body position's rather poor there, must be said. And so Feely able to get away with it to clear the ball. Wayne Hall once again. This time Bridgen have moved Cowlick up to the front of the line. Towards Cowlick. That's the first clean contact he's had. Howley swallowed up though as Spender it is. Goes in there and gets that ball back. David Austin two for Bridgen. Austin coming away. Fellow prop David Reese driving on now. Power up there in support also. Good play here by Bridgen then. Howley gets it away to Owen Williams on the drive. 
Well tackled though by David Roberts there for Newbridge. Well, how quickly Newbridge regarded their forces again when Owen Williams seemed to be threatened. He was isolated and Newbridge players were, were there in fours and fives to get into possession. Feely on the defending side again, having to feed the scrum then. Feely feeds. the hooker, does his job. And offside there against Robert Howley, maybe. Ken Braxton waiting for an advantage, and that's a good enough advantage indeed for Newbridge. But it will be interesting to see what happens in the lineup so far. It's an untidy phase, largely because I think the throwing in isn't very good. But both Shaw and Carlock in the last two lineups have delivered the ball back very awkwardly to, to their scrum halves, putting them under a lot of pressure. Wayne Hall then looking for accuracy again. Carlock has gone to the middle of the line with Spender at the front. Poor throw again, though, by the Bridgen skipper. And a penalty award in the end then against Bridgend. We're going through at that line out. Roberts takes it quickly for Newbridge. Here's the drop. Getting through, getting past the challenge there of Owen Williams. Good second ball. This time it's Kenny Wood as it goes through. Hemi Taylor standing off. Takes out the man. Good play here. But Newbridge unable to get the ball to hand. And Alan Williams can hack it away for Bridgend. But the referee's whistle has gone. A penalty against the Bridgend man for pulling an opponent back. So again here, another penalty shot, penalty chance here for Newbridge maybe. Paul Williams is third of this first half. Yes, he goes towards the posts. In centre field. And a kick of some length. Good play by Hemi Taylor here, showing good vision here to be able to pass that on to his supporting player. Good play by him. Paul Williams, third attempt and two unsuccessful shots so far. And final indeed, it looked to be getting there, but just drifting wide onto the post there. So three failures then by Paul Williams for Newbridge. <laughs> Alan Williams, that kick though has gone astray. Opposite number four, Williams trying to set something up, getting away from Glenn Ware. Now he needs support at his elbow. Was Steve Sutton, but he's gone the other way there. Ball goes loose, Sutton finally gets the ball, but it's gone forwards. But a good run by the outside half. Yes, and having uh, said so much about the Glenn Webb's uh, defensive qualities early in the game, he is at fault there basically for allowing Paul Williams to go and go beyond that first line of defence. Good play by the outside half to go as far as he did, but you tend to think that perhaps there's some very loose tackling coming from Bridgen. So a shortened line then for Bridgen at the end of this first half. Wayne Hall into Cowlick, and that's the first time I think that the ball has ended up in the hands of the catcher. Alec Williams. Opening it up, it's David Bryant trying to get past his opposite number there, David Roberts. Support this time from Reese the Prop, but it's not out of his hand and it's sudden for Newbridge. Good play here by the Newbridge forwards. It's that man Roberts coming away, a charging run by the man from Barber, getting support from John Rollins. A first chance then for Jonathan Westwood on the far side of the field for Newbridge as they pile in looking for second place possession. Here it comes, can they switch it across quickly? Great chance, surely, but no. Much side decision, though. So at last, a minute into injury time at the end of this first half. Will we get some points on, that bo on the board after that good attack then by Newbridge? Neil James with the decision of what to do here. Paul Williams having missed with his kicks to goal. What's the decision? In fact, though, for the fourth time in this half, Paul Williams has the opportunity to put his side in front. And this is good work by Newbridge. Henry Taylor too, to begin with. And there then is James, supported also by Roberts. And good driving. That was a solid drive by this man. And again, the support coming this time from Roland. That's the kind of movement that we want to see. Support coming from the forward and the ball being timed, the pass being timed properly at the right time. Ball kept alive too here by Newbridge and it looked as if they had a chance of getting some points on the board. But as we can see that uh, Bridgen really are at sixes and sevens and there were several people there who might have been called offside.
Paul Williams then finally hoping to get over the 50 point mark in Heineken matches. But again, he's made a mess of it, that's a zip lock in fact. But the referee deciding that he did get the ball down. So a real scare there for Bridgend at the end of this first half. Really, at the moment, it's difficult to think of something that might actually switch this game on. I just think that the, the onus is on Newbridge. They're in command for most of this game, but it's up to them to try and do something. Now, they're the ones that need the score. David Rees puts the kick the, there through for Alan Harris to chase. At some speed, Bradshaw across. He can do very little, but step into touch from that challenge by Alan Harris. So, Newbridge then deep into Bridgen territory. Newbridge need the score of the same because they're the ones that are putting on the pressure and they must begin to feel now that they're not getting anything for their efforts. Towards Emmy Taylor at the back, but it's tapped back there by Owen Williams for Bridgend. But the ball looks to be alive on the Newbridge side. It is indeed, they go blind. Paul Williams getting support from Andy Sutton, going on towards the line, getting help there from Shaw. Shaw did he get over, loses the ball in the act of getting over, maybe there. But the best chance of the game so far then for Newbridge. And it's exactly the point that we're making a good drive from the fourth. Good. Billy feeds then. Newbridge again in the first phase going for the drive. Taylor linking into James. Straight up, Bridge. Come on! Now Bridgen will look to drive them back to get the foot in. But no, it looks as if the ball might well be coming out once more on the Newbridge side. Here it comes to Brown the replacements. He again has knocked it forward as he made his way through. Ironic cheers from the crowd at the brewery field. But the Jens still in their own 22. Owen oh, Williams controlling it at number eight. How will he taking his time? With the drive then, for Newbridge, trying to take men out, Emmy Taylor. Here comes the second phase possession, can they spin it? Brown, Reese up from fullback. And another movement dies. And Bridgen, they were able to counter-attack. Webb to Diplock, who's come over from the left wing. Webb there again, but the ball goes loose, hacked through by Westwood. And the referee moving in quickly. And it's David Roberts and Glenn Webb were involved there in an altercation. Regent now with a replacement on the field also for Paul Cowlock as Ken Waters waits to put in. Tap back by Sutton. Referee waits for an advantage. Good advantage play here by the referee. Alan Williams comes away. Well tackled by Reese, but gets good support from David Bryan. Billy tackling the little scrum half. But Bridgend is driving on through David Austin. The ball is alive. For Howley to get it away to Williams. Thomas, the little kick over the top. Thomas going through. He can score here. Thomas going for the line. Getting there, does he? Yes, indeed. So finally then, after all that pressure from Newbridge, it's Bridgend through their centre, Gareth Thomas, who get the first points on the board in this game in the second half. And what a lovely... And Robert Howley, who brings it away for the home side. Well done, boys. Keep it going. Come on, boys. Newbridge again, then, failing to capitalise on a good position. And now up to the 22. Kenny Waters waits for the signal. Throws in long towards Taylor. Taps it down for Rowland. He takes the ball well. Support also from James and from Hitchman, who gets it back to Feely. Weighs up the options. Not a good pass. Good pass, that one, though. Reese, the kick for Alan Harris. He really is quick, the right winger. Good try for Alan Harris, then. And now this game finally is alive. Is it, though, too late for Newbridge? Alan Harris is eighth try in the league this season, but there's only two minutes to go. Newbridge may rue the day that they hadn't tried more of this kind of thing during the rest of the afternoon. Good forward play, good discipline to begin with. It's Feely with a flat uh, 
Regen defence coming up, but a, what a wonderful pass that was in a pickup by Harris. And Harris has the vision then to see that the gap is behind the Bridgen defence. And there it is, the try, the bounce is kind, and Newbridge get the score that they deserve. David Reese at fullback has missed though with the conversion, so with just a minute or so to go of normal time, it's 9-4. So is there time for Newbridge to get the try and conversion for victory? No, for the moment it's Bridget. Into the last minute of normal time then at the end of this game. Bridget of the possession. Alec Williams goes on a little run. Now looks for back row support. Gets it from David Bryant. Howley waits at scrum half. Snipes then on the blind side. The little kick through as back goes the try scorer Harris. And decides to counter attack. Reese the fullback. Manley trying to create space here for Westwoods. He's got to go some here. Jonathan Westwoods gets the ball from Brown. But Newbridge is still inside their own 22. Now they look to regroup. Here comes the ball to Feeney. Out to Paul Williams. Manley can't take it though. But the referee has called them back for a penalty against Bridgend in centre field for going over the top. Newbridge having to take it quickly. Roberts again. Not getting very far this time. Newbridge again going on the blind side. There's a little bit of space here for Brown if he can release Westwood. Here goes Westwood, a little kick. Not a good one though. And Bradshaw, Chris Bradshaw able just to flick it in. For a chance there, certainly for Jonathan Westwood. But he's a young man who can look back on the afternoon uh, who's done well for Newbridge and a few opportunities coming his way. In the meantime, it's Rhys the Prop coming away for Bridget. And Alan Williams will, I'm sure, yes, go back into his own 22. Plenty of time. Makes a beeline for us up here in the commentary position. Not much time left for Newbridge to get something back here. Having been in such control for such long periods of this game, falling then to the sucker punch of a try for Bridgend. But still less time as Terry Shaw takes that ball then for Newbridge. Waters trying to release. Finally the ball gets back to Feeney and to Williams. That's a kick to test Chris Bradshaw. Takes it beautifully. Great catch then by the Bridgend fullback. And the decision is that the ball will go at this scrum to Bregend. But maybe there, Bregend, having come up so quickly, a little kick over the top just into space might have uh, proved dividends there for Paul Yes, Williams. I thought that uh, at that moment that Bregend were lying too flat and probably offside, but a little trip just behind might have been more fruitful. Again, Newbridge looking to disrupt, but it's Alan Williams with plenty of time. And that's a finely judged kick there by the Bridgend outside half. More than two minutes of injury time gone then at the end of this game. And this surely now the last opportunity for Newbridge. Sutton taps back for Feeney. Rollins tries to take the movement off. Lays the ball down well there. For Feely to get it away to Paul Williams, looking for support inside. It comes from Neil James. Regendo pushing them back. And because they do so, in fact, on the stroke of full time. That's a famous victory indeed for Bridgend. They could not really have expected that in view of all the pressure that Newbridge put on them. But that's the man who broke the stalemates. Centre, Gareth Thomas. Got the first try of the game. He's enjoyed himself this afternoon. That's the full-time score then. Gen 9, Newbridge 4. Well, General, victory for Bridgend in the end, but they didn't show us, uh, really, did they, why they're in second position in the table? No, I don't think that they did. I'm not sure how they're playing when I'm not around, but the, the, the games that I've seen Bridgend playing this year, I've been very disappointed with their style of play. And that is exactly the question that uh, arises every time. How on earth are they still uh, second in, in the first division? The answer is they keep on winning the game. How? I'm not quite so certain. But Newbridge must really be kicking themselves. 
Yes, I think so. You know, they had that game, uh, not exactly by the scruff of the net, but they were certainly in control for more than an hour in the game. They were strong in the scrum, they were controlling what loose possession they seemed to be, and they pressurised Bridgend a great deal at forward, but it seems to me that they were cancelling each other out in their attacks, playing it too close to the scrum for too long. And because of that, it always seemed to be on the cards then, in games such as this, that the likelihood is that the, the team that soaks up the pressure and not allowing the other t team to score, that they will get a runaway try. And that's precisely what happened this afternoon. What on earth is wrong? Perhaps proving themselves against their neighbours brings out the best in Gwent teams. Certainly Newport and particularly Newbridge showed touches they'd hidden from the rest of Welsh rugby for the most of this season. Gone was the tight play dominated by forward drives and a far more welcome sight was the readiness to avoid physical confrontation and keep the ball alive. Such enterprise brings its own reward. They say fortune favours the brave and Jonathan Hawker's kick had its slice of luck to rebound to the welcoming arms of Darren Hooper who put over Andrew Lucas. Hopefully Newbridge will choose when to adopt such colourful passages of play. James Church's pass imprinted with Gwent Doyle Infirmary, far more to the liking of flanker David Gray than outside half Andrew Green. The impressive Chris Wyatt then setting up the Newport attack, and although it loses momentum momentarily, skipper Roger Bidgood on hand with an excellent angle of running to set things back on an even keel. And even things stayed right to the very end, despite the efforts of teammates turned neighbours. But perhaps it is just as well as neighbourly that the post kept out David Rees's effort and kept things all square.